In this video, we want to talk about the various data types for sets in Scala. In particular, we want to talk about what a set is in programming and how we can use them. Turns out that sets are something that comes from mathematics. Uh, they are inside of collection. We looked at UML diagrams last time. Inside of collection here, we have can go down and actually see the trait for set. Uh, which has the ability to add elements, take out elements, as well as many of the other things, th many things that we could do with uh, sequences. Um, but unlike sequences, sets are not ordered. Okay, so let's bring up a Scala uh, REPL and let's play with sets a little bit. So sets in mathematics have the basic property that they don't allow duplicates. They are just things that are used for checking ownership. And that's basically what we want to represent in, in our programs. When we create a set, it is something that the order does not matter, but whether things are in it or not does. And so I can take that set, which has the name res0, and I can add something else to it. I could take that result and then add some other value to it. And that addition right there just showed you something interesting. Okay. Order does not matter in sets. Okay. It does not matter what order you add them uh, or what operations you've done with them. It's kind of up to the set implementation to determine the order that things come in normally. Now there are some ways of storing sets that will give you particular orders but the general rule is that the order does not matter in sets. So that was showing how we can add them. You could also take them away. So I could take res zero and I could take out of it the two and that gives me a set of one, three. You'll note that these are immutable sets. We'll come back and discuss the implications of that and how you would get mutable sets in a future video. But of course, when I did this, this did not change res zero because res zero is an immutable set. It cannot be changed. This gave me back a completely new set. We can also do indexing on sets. So if we take this res two here, I could index it by three and the result comes back as true. And what does indexing mean here? When you index into a sequence, it goes through and it looks up the thing at that location. First off, locations don't mean anything in sets. All that matters is, is something in the set or is it not? And so, for example, if I ask for nine, I get false. The indexing here is telling you whether or not something is part of the set as opposed to telling you uh, what is at a location, which is what we'd get with sequences. We made a set of integers, but it's actually good. Let's actually give this one a, a name. The string set is going to be a set of those four strings. And we can show how now we get to index that, for example, I can index it with the string is. You can't take an array and index it with a string. That doesn't make sense. Now we know enough about Scala to know that what this is really doing, I have an object here, str set. In fact, you know, we can look at str set. It is an object. What's really happening when we do this indexing, when we treat it like a function, is we're calling the apply method. Okay, so there is an apply method that whatever type the set contains, in this case a string, there is an apply method that takes that same type and gives you back a boolean telling you whether that element is in the set or is not in the set. One last thing to consider here is iterating through sets. So our biggest set is still res2. Let's remember what res2 looks like. We can run through it. We can do kind of all the normal types of things that we would uh, do with sequences. 
I can do a for each. I could take res two and I could map it to say double all the elements. I could also filter it. Maybe I want to keep only the things that are greater than zero. Okay. So all of the higher order methods that we're used to using on sequences, they work just fine on sets. But of course the behaviors are a bit different. Once again, order does not matter. Okay, when I doubled these things, the order that they had been when I started off is not the order that they came out in later. Instead of getting two, four, negative 20, six, eight, well, you can see what I got. So, so order is not important at all. And of course, if I can use things like for each and map and filter, that means that I could also use a for loop to go through all the elements of the set, and that particular for loop happens to do the exact same thing that a for each would. So that's kind of an overview of sets. Oh, we'll look at an example of when we would use them, but the real thing that you use sets for is when you want to determine if something is a member of a collection efficiently. So if you are going to be doing contains a lot, you should use a set. Uh, I actually had a, uh, job I was in recently where I was able to optimize some code. They had code that called contains a lot of times. And the original version of the code did that contains on a sequence instead of on a set. And all that I did was I built a set, I took that sequence and I converted it into a set, and then I changed all the contains to working on the set instead. And I did some other things that had a similar type of effect but the net result was that code that had taken 90 seconds to run completed in 0.3 seconds. Okay, so the, the set can be a much, much, much more efficient way of determining if something is in a collision, inside of a collection, especially if the collection is large.